Okay, welcome back to this Matillion walkthrough on Snowflake. And in this lesson, we're going to import a job, Matillion job, from a JSON file that contains three new tables that we're going to use later on in some transformation jobs. We'll pick up where we left off at the end of the last video. And if you missed that, I'll add a pop up banner at the top of the screen now. And I would encourage you to go back, review that video, uh, especially if you want to follow along, it'll make uh, more sense. So we're going to click project at the top left here and we're going to click import and we're going to select a file to import. If we click browse, you've got these two files I've prepared previously. This JSON one is the one that we're going to use to import. I'm going to click upload and you can see here it's got our jobs and we're going to check the button to create tables to import this job. I'm going to leave everything else as is and click OK. And you can see on the left hand side now we've got this create tables job set up. So we can double click on that to open it up and we can see now this is the job we've imported directly from that JSON file. Somebody's created this previously and exported it for us from Matillion by going to project and clicking export and following the steps in the wizard. So the first thing that we're going to do because we've just imported this job into our project, we're going to right click and we're going to click revalidate job. And now we can see that we get some errors when we revalidate it. It's basically complaining that they can't create these tables. And if we click on one of the create table components, we've got errors in here where it's looking to use a database name and a source schema in here. So these are looking to use job variables, which we'll cover in a subsequent video. But if we right click on the canvas and click manage job variables, we can see here's the variables that it relates to. So for the one called job database name here we're going to edit that and we're going to type in our database name which is training from our first lesson the data warehouse schema name which is public and we'll change this one as well just a public for now for this demo let's revalidate the job and we're just going to go into our create tables i've already been through for the database ones and just clicked in here pick the variable name and clicked ok and then the, the validation says it's okay so going into the schema Pick the schema name, parameter, click OK. Again, that then validates. Fine, same here. OK, so it looks like we're good to go. So now we're going to run the job. And let's see what happens. So in this job, it will look to create or replace the tables in Snowflake. So here you've got a couple of options that you can apply to Snowflake. Either replace or just a straight up create or a create if not exists already. So you can pick that. Everything's just doing a replace. And then we're adding data into our state lookup table. You can see here it's using the parameters, database name and source schema name to insert this data, which has been hard coded in the SQL script. And similarly, we're creating like a date lookup table here. Same principle, we've got our insert script here. Now we've created a blank table called Fact Flight Analysis Summary Table, which we'll use further down the track. So now what we want to do is join each airport that we have to its US state. And to do that, we'll need to create a transformation job to join the two tables together that we need using the join component. One table contains the flight data that we loaded in this job here. And the second table we need to join contains the data from the US states loaded in this pre-created orchestration job. So let's get on and create our first transformation job in Matillion. We're gonna right click on our project folder and this time instead of selecting add orchestration job, we're selecting add transformation job. We're gonna give it a name and we're gonna call it load dimension airport. Um, I don't use, usually use this name of convention, I'm just following along with the Matillion training just to keep it consistent if you guys are looking to do that as well and i'll put the link in the video description below as well in case you want to look it up so switch to new job now yes now we need to find the input component input table so we drag that onto the canvas and then we select our table here and we go down to our properties tab and then we're going to pick our target table now we're going to select our target table if i click here notice i get this error because it's using the environment defaults of database and schema. Now in the first video, the one that preceded this in the playlist, I created my project folder and didn't add any defaults in 
for the Snowflake environment, which has caused me problems. And that resulted in me creating a second environment specifying a database schema and warehouse as defaults for Snowflake. You can see at the moment along the top, it tells you the, the project group, the project name, the version, and the environment that you're using by default. I want to switch to use this AWS V2, which is the second version I added with the right defaults in there. So I'm not continually coming up with errors like this. If I click cancel, I can just simply come across the environments on the left hand side, right click on the environment I want to move to and click select environment. This then changes up here. I can then go in here and select my target table and I'm going to pick train and airports and click OK. Now train and airports, don't forget, was the table that we created on our initial orchestration job, loading data from our RDS database in here. Now I also need to specify the column, the column names. So if I click here, it will look at the target table, bring up all the columns I've got available, and I'm going to click this to move everything across and click OK. So now I need to bring my other table into play because this is what I need to join together. So if I expand my environments again down here, notice I don't see all my tables down here. I need to right click my schema and click refresh. Now if I expand my tables, I see the ones I've just created as part of this session in here. So I want to join my airport state, don't forget, to my US state lookup. And you can see now it's populated my target table and column names automatically because I've dragged it straight from the environments section here. Now I need to join those together. So I'm going to go back to my components grid, get rid of that, type in join, drag join onto the window here. And now we're just going to use the mouse to connect up the two tables to the join component. And then we need to configure the join component. So again, you'll spot a pattern now every time you bring in a component onto the canvas, you click on it and highlight it. The UI is context sensitive, meaning that once you've clicked on it, you will get the relevant parameters that you need to add values to, and it will be helping you out along the way as you're doing it. So main table is the first one that we need to pick up. We're going to use training airports as our main table. And it asks us to provide an alias. I'm just going to call it main. And then we're going to go to joins. We're going to click on here. We're going to click the plus button again. We want to join it to the US state lookup table. Again, it's asking for alias. We're just going to call it state. The join type in this case we want is a left join. So we want to keep everything from the main table, regardless if we find a match in state or not. And we're going to click OK here. Now we need to modify the join expression next. So let's click into here. And from the main table, the driving table, we're going to use the state columns. So we click that little arrow. State ends up in our dialog box at the top here. And then we can click our equal sign. And then we're going to bring our code from our state table to specify our join condition and tell Matillion how we want to attempt to join those two tables together. Click OK. Finally, we've got one more parameter to configure, which is output columns. And we need to add everything in here. So we'll click in here, click add all. We don't necessarily need to stick code in here because it's part of our join up here anyway. So we're just going to remove that by clicking, highlighting it and clicking the minus sign. We can click OK. Now our join is finally ready to go. And that's it for this lesson on this video. So we've taken our data, we've joined it together, we've provided a left join. The final element that we need to do, which will be in the next video, is to create the airport's dimension from this data and complete our transformation job. Join me in the next video, which will be the next one in the playlist, to walk through that with me. Keep watching, keep subscribing, new videos coming soon. I also wanted to let you know about our Master and Snowflake program of myself that we run, and it's, it's an exclusive signature program to help you master Snowflake and learn how to design, implement, and scale solutions in the cloud. And I've designed this program specifically for those people who have either scratched the surface using Snowflake or who are stuck working with legacy on-premise technologies and haven't been invested in by their companies and have fallen behind in their career. And what I've done is packaged up my knowledge and experience of working with Snowflake since 2017 and learning how to package up Snowflake's out-of-the-box capabilities in a way where you can apply them in the real world 
to address common challenges. So this program isn't about theory. Of course, I need to introduce you to the concepts if you're new to Snowflake, and many of my members are. But it's really about introducing the theory and then in practice how you apply those in the real world. I've been through the pain of understanding what works and what doesn't. Now I've got a formula or a set of recipes, if you like, that show you how to do that. So the Master and Snowflake program includes in-depth, on-demand video course content that I've created that all include practical hands-on demos. I provide access to all the code, templates, and files that I use as part of those demos. So you can download them and use them freely. You may want to use them in your day-to-day -day work. You may want to take them and customize them and use them as a starting point. All members on the program get exclusive access to a members-only group where everybody can help each other out and share their knowledge and best practice and get expert advice. Finally, I also carry out a group 60-minute coaching call with all the members, totally optional, where you can ask me anything about Snowflake, data analytics, data strategy, data architecture, you name it, um, interview advice, and I can help you and give my um, input and help and support and guidance around that. Finally, you'll get lifetime access to all feature updates. Snowflake's changing and evolving. There's new features and releases every week, and you'll continue to benefit from those updates as well. At a high level, there's 10 modules. This is what we cover, everything ranging from the Snowflake architecture to getting data into Snowflake. And then once you've got data, how do you effectively use it, secure it, share it, and work with it to ensure that you get the maximum value from your Snowflake implementation? If you're interested, I've included the application link in the video description below. If this sounds like the thing that you're looking for and you want to supercharge your career, and if you're ready to take the ultimate step, I'd really encourage you to fill out the application form below.